Today I'm going to talk about the aggregation pipeline in MongoDB. Uh, my name is Jason Terpko. I am a DBA at Average Rocket uh, with Antonius, who just spoke. Um, <clears throat> at this time, I currently work on MongoDB. Um, in the past, I've worked on some of the other technologies, uh, primarily Vertica and MySQL, uh, before MongoDB. Today we're going to cover uh, the framework, uh, the aggregation framework, stages, the operators, um, some considerations for performance and new features introduced in uh, 3.4. <clears throat> so the aggregation pipeline, uh, we're going to review the stages, the operators, and I'm going to give you a multi-stage example. So what the framework is, um, it's, a, it's a way for you to visualize or manipulate data um, from a collection. Uh, and with that data, you can output it to your application, whether it's a cursor or an array, or even output it to another collection within the same database. Um, if you do decide to uh, output it to a collection, it has to be uh, uncharted, and we'll replace any existing collections within that. Uh, the framework is also expandable. Um, every, every major version, they add new operators, and even in 3.4, uh, they introduce views, and the views leverage this aggregation framework. Uh, <clears throat> state, these are the most common stages we see. Um, Object Rocket is a, a database as a service, so we have uh, a decent amount of customers that rely on aggregations on a daily basis. And uh, when looking or helping them troubleshoot these aggregations, these are typically the most common uh, stages we'll see. Uh, stages like count and graph lookup were introduced in 3.4, same with facet and bucket. So some of these common stages, um, some of the important ones would be your match um, limit stages. Um, uh, match limit and project, what they're going to do is they're going to reduce the amount of data passed to, passed to each stage. Uh, so when you're taking performance into consideration, these are three of the stages you're going to want to look at. And then after that, um, <clears throat> you're going to either project data um, from a particular stage or and then group that data and then output it, whether, again, it's to a cursor or a collection. <clears throat> so uh, these, are, these are common operators. You're going to also find similar ones in MySQL. Uh, most of these are self-explanatory. Uh, first and last are nice. Uh, a common use case for that is deduping applications or deduping application data. Sometimes a customer may insert uh, extra data. It's duplicate because they're missing a unique index. You can use the aggregation framework to pull out, say, the first or last record, um, and they know they know whether they know what record they need. So they're going to use first or last, and then uh, output that to another collection, and that's a way for them to debug the problem. Also, the date operators are nice because you could take an ISO date from MongoDB um, and extract those values from that, pass that to another stage, and then group on those values, which is really nice. And it also offers some true or false operators. Um, you, can, you can take a value, um, compare that, or you can take a field and compare that to a certain value, and then create a new field in your, in your, aggregate, in your, um, in your stage, in your output, that's going to be true or false based on the criteria that you passed here. So here's an example aggregation. Um, I used a change log. The change log is a, a a collection in the config database. Uh, so if you're on a sharded cluster, this is always going to be here, and that's kind of why I used it. Uh, what this is measuring, it's measuring the average milliseconds uh, to move a chunk from one shard to another. Uh, this is very useful because if you shard a collection, you would like to estimate how long it's going to take you to move, to balance that data across your cluster. In this case, we start with the collection, and then we move on to the match phase. The match phase is nice because I only want to look at the chunks that have successfully moved, and I also want to I also want to look at the steps um, when step six of six is greater than zero. Next, I'm going to move on to a sort and limit. Uh, I want to sort because I want the most recent chunk moves because chunk moves can vary over time. So, um, for to forecast the, the time to completion, I'm just going to look at the last hundred or the, I'm going to sort by time descending and then look at the last hundred. Next, I'm going to project the fields, the only the fields I want, and in this case, I just want my, my steps because my steps contain the milliseconds that it, that it took per step, and then I'm going to add them together, and that's going to give me the total, the total time to move that chunk uh, 
from one shard to another. And then lastly, I'm gonna take that projection, I'm gonna pass it to a group phase. I don't need an ID because I just want a total average time. Take that average time and that's, and then I could take that, that average total time um, and times that by the number of total chunks I have left to move. And now I know when my collection will be balanced. Next we're um, gonna cover um, some optimizations. These are optimizations that you can do or MongoDB is gonna do on your behalf. Uh, the project phase, uh, again, is crucial. What this is, phase is gonna do is gonna limit the amount of data you're passing from one stage to another. Uh, this is gonna reduce the CPU, the RAM, and also the disk I.O. during this process. Uh, pre, pre, well, it's gonna still apply um, it to all versions when they need to merge data from multiple shards, uh, but pre 3.2, uh, uh, the primary shard was also always responsible for merging this data. Oftentimes you would see the primary shard uh, for an aggregation uh, have a lot of load where some of the other shards did not have that same load and after diagnosing the problem, you realized it was merging a lot of data from a lot of aggregations. MongoDB will also do sequencing for you. So in this example, uh, we, the, the person that wrote the, the jobs aggregation put the sort put the sort phase in front of the match phase. Um, instead of sorting uh, a lot of documents or possibly the whole collection, instead MongoDB will switch those phases for you. Switch those phases for you and, um, and do the match phase first. So it's only gonna pull the import jobs back and, uh, and then sort that limited number of documents passing it to the next, to the next project stage. Uh, MongoDB will also coalesce stages. So for example, if you had two match phases, and we've seen this before, if you had a, a match for import and then another match uh, for, say, a department, uh, that will, MongoDB will actually merge those together in two phases. It's not gonna, it's not gonna pass the, the first stage to the next match phase and waste time there. <clears throat> Indexing and data merging. Merging, one important thing is the, for index use, the match stage and the, and the sort stage are the only two stages that can utilize indexes. Um, this is important and this is why you, they must be first in your pipeline. If they're not first, typically you're gonna see a full collection scan. Also previously mentioned, re released in version 3.2, uh, the data does not have to be merged on the primary shard. Um, if data has to be merged from multiple shards, MongoDB will randomly choose a shard in the cluster and use that as the, the merging shard. Uh, also, if your match is targeted, uh, there's no reason to move that data to the primary shard. The aggregation will be uh, completely executed on that target shard as long as data is not needed from other shards. All stages have a, a limit of 100 megabytes of RAM. Uh, this, is a, this is the most common restriction we see uh, customers encounter. Um, they'll come to us, why isn't our aggregation working? And it's because they're hitting this. Um, you can work around this with allow disk, allow disk use, and what this does, it will, it'll, it'll take um, any, most of the stages um, and write that stage to a file so it can be processed to the next stage. You really wanna be cautious with this because you have the potential of consuming too much I.O. when you're using this, or filling up the disk, resulting in the aggregation crashing or the MongoD crashing due to uh, lack of disk space. Um, <clears throat> new, in, new in version 3.4 um, are three useful uh, aggregation uh, stages, and we're gonna cover those next. So recursive, recursive search. So in version 3.2, MongoDB released a dollar sign lookup, which was uh, their first version of the join, um, say MySQL. Uh, and, what this, and what they did is expand on that in 3.4. So graph lookup is a recursive search, and as long as your schema permits it, what you can do is you can take, you can start with one, you can start with a collection, and then you can, then you can start with a, a value, and then from that, um, from that value and field, recursively look up on a two field, and then you're gonna see the relations between, between say the, uh, someone, the name is a person, their, them and their connections and their connections as well. 
considerations here so you don't so you don't um, impact uh, and possibly crash your server. Uh, allow disk use is ignored here. Uh, the, the, recur the graph lookup phase is always limited to 100 megabytes of RAM. Uh, also, to help with performance, you can also configure a max step so you're not you, you're not doing too many recursions uh, during the graph lookup. And if you set it to zero, it's the equivalent to dollar sign lookup. Uh, also with views, uh, views support collations in version 3.4. Uh, your collation must be consistent across all views if you're using graph lookup. Uh, here's a sample, of a few sample documents where you have uh, some users and they're connected to other people and those other people then are connected to other people. <clears throat> An example aggregation now is from before. And in this case, I'm going to project the ID, the name, and a known connection. And the, the resulting document is John is connected, it has known connections, Melissa, George, Jane, and David. And that was because John was connected to David, David was connected to George, and George was connected to Melissa. And lastly, uh, faceted search. Uh, faceted search is a way to have multiple sub-pipelines in a single aggregation stage. This is um, the most common use case um, I think of when it comes to faceted search is retail. Uh, you, have, you, have a, you have some inventory and you would like to either display the, invent the available inventory in your UI or know what you actually have in inventory for a certain, um, so, so for a certain category of your, um, your inventory. So in this case, um, some clothing, uh, t-shirts, a hoodie. Um, I have some prices, I have colors, I have sizes, and I just want to quickly see that in a single aggregation stage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to unwind my color arrays and fit, put them into a category. I'm going to have a category of sizes. Um, and again, that was an array, so I'm going to unwind that. And then I, had, then I had some prices on each of the documents, and I'm going to create a bucket. And in this case, because we just had a, a couple documents, I didn't have a, say, a, a large amount of data, um, I only created two buckets. If you had uh, more varying prices, you may want to create more buckets depending on um, the output you desire. And what that does is it outputs a single document with multiple embedded documents. And in that, you can see it broke down um, each color, it gave me a count back for each of the colors, each of the sizes, and then it created the two buckets I wanted uh, for for my pricing. And then lastly, um, views. Uh, so a view, like other database technologies, is a read-only is a, uh, a read -only view. Uh, what MongoDB did is they, let, they leveraged their ag aggregation fr framework um, to implement views. Uh, these views are com computed um, on demand, and they can use the underlying indexes of that collection. Uh, mm -hmm. The names are immutable, so if you needed to rename a view or change a view, you need to drop and recreate it. And they can be created on shard, sharded collections. Uh, if you were to run show collections, a view is going to look like another collection and also show up in, when you're listing collections. What uh, views can do is they can give you more granular access um, to your data. So for example, if you had a QA department that needed a specific amount of data, but you didn't want to expose um, all all documents or all column or all fields to them, you can then restrict that using views. Um, Antonius, who spoke previously, wrote a good um, blog article on views, uh, which is on the Object Rocket um, blog. So here we have an example document of, of say, an expense report, and and I have a manager that wants to see all the expenses from the last day. And in this case, I'm just going to use my um, one, uh, give the view a name, have a collection, and then my, my first stage is going to be a match, so I won't only want to see the last 24 hours, and I'm doing a little bit of um, isodate math here. And then I'm only going to project, project the first name, last name, and the amount that that, that customer expensed, and then I'm going to sort uh, descending because you typically want the most recent first. Here's an example where you see the system.views, expenses, and recent expenses in your show collections. The system.views just holds the metadata 
uh, for the view. This is needed for replication or if you Mongo dump and restore this view to another database, uh, this, the view will get recreated in the, in the destination. And lastly, just the output from that view. And in this case, it, it read it and just sorted descending and it would use the underlying index that I had on uh, created date. Any questions? Uh, typically an error will be returned to the driver and in some cases it will also be uh, logged uh, in the logs but typically the driver will will be report the driver will get an error message back saying you've hit the the maximum limitation yeah yes so there's there is so there is an explain option for the aggregation framework and it would be right here. Um, so where we passed allowed, allowed disk use, there's an explain flag you can do as well uh, after, after all of your stages. Uh, what you could do though, um, sometimes the, the uh, fi well one, that explain plan is good for if you want to see how the aggregation is, is um, is processing the process processing the data through the various stages but if you wanted just to see if you wanted to see how your match stage was going to perform you could do the equivalent you could do the equivalent with just a find but if you want to see how mongodb how the whole aggregation is doing then yes just put an explain true here but typically uh, we will start with a match phase first with a find when we're when we're debugging aggregations and then um, if, that, if that doesn't lead us to any issues, then we'll start using, say, explain to look at the, the entire aggregation. Yes, you can, um, I believe you can actually put a match up here first and then there's, uh, I believe there's going to be an option to restrict. Uh, there's going to be an option to restrict, say, in, 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 one, of the bucket, in one of the bucket phases. Uh, but yes, you can, you can limit the amount of data you're processing with these stages. Then the match would come before the, the facet. What would you suggest uh, when testing all of these uh, uh, patterns and then variations in, uh, in a shard request? Uh, would you suggest, I don't know, testing first in one of the uh, shards and then move to the other? Uh, yeah, so that's one approach. Um, I test it. So there, there's two. I would, my two market recommendations are to start on secondaries first um, because you can OOM um, a node. So as long as you first start on an individual shard to test your aggregations, you know that you're only aggregating data on that one secondary. You know it's not your complete set. And then you can then maybe move to the Mongo S layer. But I actually recommend testing it in a staging environment uh, first. Uh, and partly because a lot of people will have a subset of their data in a, in a development or staging environment, the aggregations run fine, and then as soon as you run them on your production set, a lot more data is consumed by this aggregation and you run in either performance issues or the, or the, sort, the sort limitation or the OOM issue. Thank you. And again, um, from the previous one, we're hiring. Thank you.